Hello, everybody. Good morning to some of you, good afternoon to others, and good evening to the rest. I'm Megan Isidore, the director and co-founder of the River Otter Ecology Project. I'm delighted to have you here today to honor our artists, poets, and photographers who have done their best to support watershed conservation and river otter ecology project, and it's a very good best. Thank you so much. I'm excited about the show. And now I will switch us over to Sheep's screen sharing and we will get started. Today we're here to honor the Earth's waters and her artists, poets, and photographers. I'm really delighted to be here today with all of you who have shared your talent, your hard work, and above all, your love and passion for the wild to support healing the Earth. River Otter Ecology Project has been leveraging the enormous public interest in river otters to support conservation for nearly nine years now. We research, engage community scientists, and educate, helping agencies, NGOs, students, and the public to understand why and how we must support our shared and imperiled watersheds. Many of us are writers and artists as well, and we, as we know, nature and art go together because of our very human, very animalian connection to the earth, so deep and so profound that we can't help grieving, dancing, growing, and striving along with her through our creative work. River Otter Ecology Project is a small nonprofit and we depend upon donations to continue our work. The Mostly Water Art Photography and Poetry Contest is a fundraiser as well as a celebration of our wonderful artists. I want to thank and recognize our amazing sponsors who are so important to our earth, both in their support for us and on their own behalf. Many of our sponsors also are partners or volunteers or do many other things for us. So many, many thanks to our lead sponsor, Las Galinas Valley Sanitary District. Las Galinas um, Valley Sanitary District is also a partner in our research and we have worked on their lands for many years. Thank you so much to Steve and Wendy Doherty. Wendy is one of our um, senior volunteers and has done amazing work with us and for us also for many years. River Otter Ecology Project Board of Directors, thank you all so much for joining in to support us. Pacific Door Products, Morning Cloak Designs, um, Heidi Trier is a wonderful supporter of, of our project and has been for many years. Thank you all. And we'll move on now to more of our terrific supporters, Folk Menace Puppets, Napa Valley Paddle, Key Dash Creative Services, Big Mouth, Law Office of David J. Weinsoff, IES Container, Annalise Fink, Dentistry, and um, two of our photographers who donate so many photos to us and really have move our work forward beautifully through that. Jeff and Wendy Photography and Carlos Parada Nature Photography. Peter Bartow Voice Actor, another volunteer who does incredible work for us, one of our senior field volunteers, one of our speakers. There, I don't know that Pete um, realizes how incredibly helpful he is to our project. Thank you, Pete. Sierra Club Marin Chapter, always delighted to be friends with Sierra Club. And individuals, Sharon Barnett and Kevin Stockman and Holly Groves. Thank you all so much to your support, for your support. We are living through dangerous, difficult and often tragic times. Our conservation work can become exhausting and it can seem really unlimited. We gain inspiration and grounding, often education and joy from visual arts and from poetry. Who hasn't seen a photograph that moved us to tears? A painting that perfectly distilled just what we love so deeply. 
read or heard a poem whose wisdom cut through the daily and pierced our hearts and minds. The arts raise us up and support what is best within us. Our four judges who volunteered their time and talent to support our conservation goals embody all of that and more. Arisa White, our poetry judge, is a poet and writer and an assistant professor of creative writing at Colby College. She's the author of Who's Your Daddy? Her debut poetic memoir to be published by Augury Books in March, 2021. Congratulations, Arisa, I can't wait to read that. She's also the co-author of Biddy Mason Speaks Up, the second book in the Fighting for Justice series for young readers. She serves on the board of directors for Foglifter and Nomadic Press. You can learn more about Arisa's work at arisawhite.com. And I should note that our helper Terrence is putting up all of these websites in the chat and I suggest that you check them out. There's a lot of good information and lots to look at and, and, and uh, learn on the websites. Our, one of our two photography judges, Susie Esterhaz, is an award-winning wildlife photographer. She's best known for her work documenting newborn animals and family life in the wild. She's photographed over a hundred cover and feature stories for many publications. I'm sure you've seen her work maybe in National Geographic or Ranger Rick. Susie has 21 books in print with another three in progress. Susie, how do you do that? She also helps raise funds and awareness for environmental organizations around the globe. And she has recently founded Girls Who Click, a nonprofit dedicated to encouraging young women to enter this male dominated profession. Please see her website, susieesterhouse.com. Next, John Muir Laws, Jack is our art judge. He is a scientist and educator and author who helps people forge a deeper and more personal connection with nature through keeping illustrated nature journals and understanding science. I've be been among the fascinated students in Jack's nature drawing classes, and I always come away with new understanding, but most of all with very specific insights about drawing and painting nature that Jack distills from years of study, observation, and very careful and detailed record keeping. Jack is a remarkable artist, teacher, and biologist. Please learn more about his free weekly classes and online videos at johnmuirlaws.com. Last and certainly not least is Yauka van der Kuyschen, a wildlife and conservation photographer based in San Francisco and the Netherlands. His mission is to reconnect his audience with the beauty and diversity of the wildlife that lives in our most densely populated areas, urban places that aren't usually considered part of the wild. Yauka's work reminds us that the wild is everywhere and deserves our support everywhere. He was the faithful photographer of Suto Sam, the first river otter to return to San Francisco, and his photos and videos have helped move our conservation work forward since our project began. Yauka was recently featured in PBS's series Bay Area Bountiful in Walk on the Wild Side, which can be found on his homepage at sfwildlife.com. I hope you'll take the time to visit all of the judges' websites. They're worth an exploration, and we're very honored by their generosity and their kindness in joining our contest. Thank you all so very much. And now the time has come for the awards. I hope you enjoy each of the entries as we have. Please note that all of our entries, not just the contest winners, will remain on the website for a couple of weeks because every entry is worth a second look or many more work or many more looks. And our winners, our award winners entries will remain on the website for at least six months, if not forever. Now we are going to open with our youngest prize winner, the Children's Poetry Award. Arisa, over to you. 
Thank you, Megan. Um, so it brings me much pleasure to announce um, our first place uh, children's poetry winner, Lucas uh, Paisard. Um, Lucas is present and also will be sharing a video of their, their poem, Otters. I selected this poem because I love the play that is happening in it, the narrative and the drawings that go along with it. Um, so congratulations, Lucas. And here we go. Congratulations, Lucas. Lucas sent a video for us. Hey, my name is Lucas Pricer. And some place in Monterey called Elkhorn Slough inspired me to do this wonderful poem. The Elkhorn Slough is a little river in Monterey that is filled with hundreds, maybe thousands of otters. That was what inspired me to do this poem. And also, the way otters hunt their prey, I found in um, a magazine called Ranger Rick Zoo Books. It was entitled Otters, Skunks, and Their Relatives. <laughs> hey, my name is. And thank you so much, and congratulations, Lucas. I, we are now moving on to the first place in youth photography and um, Susie Esterhaas. Hi, I'm Ophelia and I'm currently a high school student at the Kate School of Carpentry in California. I am so grateful to be recognized in this competition as I hope to become a wildlife photographer and filmmaker someday. Living in California, I think we often overlook our access to water, specifically wonderful ecosystems such as beaches, salt marshes, kelp forests, and tidal pools. I hope that my photos can serve as a vessel through which conservation can be achieved for these habitats. Lastly, I would like to thank Amy Sinkina, the school photographer who I see as my personal mentor. Thanks again. So this wonderful image from Ophelia, I absolutely love it for, for many reasons, but the profound thing is how quiet and still it is. This is just a, an everyday moment with a very, very beautiful contemplative view of this bird and the world. And I love the way Ophelia did this. Would Ophelia like to say hello? And is Ophelia here? Perhaps not. We'll, we'll move on. And our next group of awards goes to our Youth and Children's Art and Jack Laws. Hi there, everybody. This is a, a stunning piece of work by Akira um, Vaught. And what really jumped out to me uh, about it was just the, the rich saturated color, um, also combining elements of earth, sky and water together, um, a beautiful composition and uh, just makes me uh, happy to be on this planet. So uh, Kira Vaught, thank you so much for your image, the sunset and the river. Thank you, Jack. Akira wasn't able to be here today, so we will go on. Our first place winner is Ava Lee. And Taken for Granted is a really thought-provoking uh, painting that she's done. Um, sort of technically, artistically, the transparency of water, the way it drips through these, these, these fingers, um, it's poetic, it's beautiful and really makes you pause and think. And I think that, that these sorts of images that uh, help us kind of arrest us and uh, make us take a, a, a second thought, perhaps will encourage us not to take for granted what we otherwise would. Let's hear from Ava. Oh. Hi, my name is Ava. I'm passionate about protecting the environment and I created this piece to we take a lot of things for granted, water being one of them. It seeps through our fingers as we try to capture it and we can't hold onto it forever. Even though 71% of the earth is covered in water, only less than 1% is liquid fresh water available to humans. 
In California, we are lucky to be near the ocean, but we have been in the drought for many, many years. This inspired me to create this piece. I hope my work reminds people to take care of natural resources. Thank you. Our third place um, children's art winner is Josh, Jocelyn Feichert. And this seal looking straight into your face reminds you of your connection with nature and our mutual responsibility to take care of it. I found it a really arresting and very um, personal piece, especially because of that contact um, through the eyes of the seal. Thank you. Our second place winner is Jen Harness. And isn't this a delightful and uh, beautiful study? You have the, the, uh, the chicken in the environment. We see the rain pour pouring down and the habitat with, in which it finds shelter. All things which helps us remember and contemplate our connection, not just with other living species, but with the natural systems that support them and, and help them survive. Let's hear from Jen right now. Hello, my name is Jen Harness, and this is my painting. I painted it during the August complex fire, and the fire got really close to where I live. So when I painted this, I was really hoping for rain to come and put it out. And this is um, my chicken, Zooey. And sorry, he's one of my favorite chickens. And during the dark days of the August complex, when a lot of the smoke came, um, he would come to our house on the porch every day and wake me up. So I put him in my painting. Thank you, Jen. And I'm uh, hoping that uh, Juby also is doing very well right now. Um, our first place winner, The Free Spirit by Panama Landis, um, is uh, also makes that direct connection with the viewer in a playful, colorful, and uh, both art artistic and from a scientific illustrator perspective, really accurately observed um, study of this, this, this beautiful otter. Um, I believe that we have an, a, a, an audio from Pamela, uh, uh, Panama as well. I'm 13 years old and I drew a otter picture that was for my dad actually. The inspiration behind it was my dad. And I did it for his birthday because he loves otters. They're his spirit animal. And so I drew this otter for his birthday, but I actually used pastels and markers and watercolor. I used a ton of things. And so um, when I saw the water art contest, I thought that it would be cool because it's an otter and it sort of looks like water. And so I entered it in that. And I actually found out about the river otter ecology about a year ago when I turned 12. I wanted to donate my birthday money to a place <laughs> for animals. And I found the river otter ecology and I just loved it. And so I donated my money there. And I'm so grateful that you guys are taking care of the otters. And thank you so much. Bye. Panama, thank you so much. Uh, your uh, image of this otter uh, is as playfully painted as um, the otter's spirit in life is. So well done. Well done, all of you. This is, it's so inspiring and beautiful to see this work. Thank you all so much. Thank you to all the youth and children's artists. You all are wonderful and I hope you keep doing art. And we will move on next to adult amateur poetry and Arisa. Um, so our third place adult amateur um, winner for poetry is Mary Bicknell for the poem, Waiting for the Rain. What I appreciate about this poem is how the, rep the repetition that is used recreates the experience of waiting for rain. Congratulations, Mary. And 
Um, our second place adult amateur winner is Georgette Howington uh, for the poem, A Childhood Memory. Um, and with this poem, what I loved about it is how the opening stanza encourages the reader to remember that water is a memory and presence in our lives. And our first place adult uh, amateur poetry winner is Yeva Johns for the poem, River Games. What I loved and enjoyed most about this poem is how this poem combines water with the poet's becoming. Um, we have a video from Yeva Johnson. Hello, I'm Yeva Johnson and I'll be reading an excerpt of my poem, River Games. Thank you to the Mostly Water Contest and Arissa White. My water spirit animal, a river otter, transfigured poet plunging and bobbing, as I navigate the rapids, I join my lyric Luch siblings on the current. We poetry Luch siblings carried by the current tumble and turn in the rapids. We nutrients flip and twist through a river of words like poetic gymnasts. Our nutrient gymnasts of verse twist and flip over words like runnels to the sea. We play with lines and rhymes over smooth stones in the shallow eddies. The shallow eddies play hide and seek with our stone lines, smooth rhymes. We slip like slick otters filled with glee and dip toward a sandy gratitude. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, Yeva. Congratulations to all the poets. Thank you, everybody. We're moving forward now to photography and uh, Susie Esterhouse. We'll begin with our adult amateur photography, photographers. Okay, so for third place amateur, we have Kimberly and Kimberly's photo is one of my absolute favorites that was entered. It's just a beautiful work of art. I love the shape of the wings almost in a heart, the light coming through the feathers, the darkness of the background is just absolutely stunning. Love it, love it, love it. And then we have our second place, Anthony's beautiful photo of a snowy egret on these pillars with an absolutely stunning reflection. Obviously what makes this photo is the reflection and then also the line of the three pillars. It's just, a, it's a beautiful image. So congratulations, Anthony. And then we have our first place winner uh, Ray's photo of a giant river otter eating a fish. And this one is an absolute stunner. Um, Megan, am I right? This is a giant river otter? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So these guys are down in um, South America and um, they can be shy. They also can be used to people, but just getting this behavior, beautiful composition, getting the light nice and soft. I absolutely love this image. Also the webbed feet grabbing the, the fish, it just makes it fantastic image. So congratulations to Ray and all the other winners in this category. Congratulations, everybody. And once again, we'll switch over to Art and Jack Laws. Hey there, everyone. Um, I'd like to congratulate Chris Jones for this, uh, lovely landscape. This is a place that I know, and it really captures the feeling of these hills. Um, a, 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 an image like this is actually a lot more challenging uh, to paint than uh, a, a lot of people might imagine. But this, you really have a sense of the perspective, the volumes of the mountains and the distance. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, work of art that kind of takes me to a place, a real sense of place. Thank you. Our second place um, winner, uh, Anna Choi Lee, um, has a, uh, a, a message for us, which we have recorded. Let's hear from her first. Anna Choi Lee, I live in Edmonds, Washington. This is my favorite tree in front of my yard. Um, 
creative art process for me is when I block out the rest of the world and um, let my heart and mind unite. That's it for me. <laughs> Thank you. And here we have her work of art, this family group of uh, orca here. Um, you see the, the, the young ones, and I'm thinking two females because of the shape of those, those dorsal fins. Something that is really notable about this is the texture of the water itself and the reflections on them. The, the sense of shine on the back of the orcas. All of these are really challenging uh, technical things to do. Um, here achieved with grace, beauty, and uh, just a, a, a feeling for the place. I also love the proximity of these animals together. It really makes you kind of uh, remember the, the importance of our community. And our first place winner is this uh, simple sandpiper shape. Um, you don't get a, a drawing like this without having made hundreds and hundreds of others. It just, the uh, immediacy of it really captures a, a sense of the, the life and the quickness of, and speed of, these, these, uh, of a sandpiper as it darts back and forth across the sand. Some places we see lost and found edges um, where you, the, the, the edge is kind of lost onto the paper with sort of a, an indistinct lines. In other places, it's crisp and clear. Um, kind of uh, makes me feel like I'm with the bird on um, a, a, a day where the, the atmosphere is really connecting the animal to the place. The way that this bird blends into the paper um, is very much what we see when we're out there on the beach in nature. Um, so both for the, the, the technical qualities of the drawing and the feeling of the organism. This is our first place winner for amateur art and congratulations to Marilyn Petch. Thank you, Jack. And thank you to all of our artists, photographers and poets in the adult amateur categories. It was wonderful to see all of your work. And now we are going to move on to the adult professional categories. We'll do poetry and then photos and then art professional categories. And we will begin with Arisa. Thank you, Megan. Um, so the second place winner in the adult professional um, category for poetry is Brian Curvin for the poem, Babe Mother. And this poem, what I love is the way in which Brian personifies um, the water as a maternal presence. I believe we have a video from Brian. Here we are at the foot of Tamales Bay, the greatest source of inspiration. It's all happening here on the water's edge. Drink to the throat and heart's content. Whether warmly or cold, she embraces me whole, makes me feel full, makes me feel free in my flapping body. All she asks in return is the respect hers or any body deserves. What is it to love a place so much? You feel your skin and sinews and blood are made of her. My body and breath and rhythm of hers and wounds. I feel my life force buoyed up here, whirling through the spiraling gyre, this crisscrossing of currents. Every time I immerse here, I always come out well. It's a great poem. Um, I love the sort of gratitude to the bay and in that video by Brian. And our first place adult pro poetry winner is Catherine Montague for the poem Laguna Reflections. 
Laguna reflections encourage you to pay attention to the watery landscapes that are all around you. And here's Catherine's poem. I'm Catherine Montague, and the name of my poem is Laguna Reflections. The Laguna de Santa Rosa is east of Sebastopol and west of Santa Rosa. In addition to the Laguna Environmental Center, there are many cow pastures surrounding the Laguna, and this is where I saw the snowy egrets attending the cattle out in the field. You can often see them all around the feet of the cattle as they graze. Of course, the main channel of the Laguna is the most likely place to spot a river otter, and I have seen them there several times. Thank you, Catherine. And I am putting up her um, poem just for a couple of minutes and we will um, move on then to adult professional poetry, uh, pho photography, but let's not forget that you can, you'll be able to see all of these for the next couple of weeks. So you might wanna spend a little more time than we have here on each of our um, entries. So on we go to Yauco and adult professional photography. Hello, everyone. I'm happy to present these, this category. First, we start with the third place um, by uh, Gary Hamilton, Let It Slide. Um, this beautiful image stood out of the entries because of the, uh, the more artistic approach to this black and white long exposure. Um, it, it, it really has um, a mystery to it um, because the scale is not immediately obvious. It sort of looks like this large system of waterfalls, but it could also be a small system of rapids in a tiny forest stream, um, which, which really ties into the theme of this contest on how important it is to <laughs> protect water big and small because any system of water sustains life and is, is important protecting. Um, so uh, congratulations, Gary, on winning the bronze. Next, we have Daniel Dietrich with a great image, but first he has something to say about it. Hi, I'm Daniel Dietrich. I'm a wildlife and conservation photographer and guide in Point Reyes National Seashore. I feel so fortunate to live in this amazing place where water and land meet, bringing together river otters, elephant seals with bobcats and badgers. It truly is a really remarkable place and I feel so fortunate to live here. A huge thanks to the River Otter Ecology Project for all the work they do and for sponsoring this event. And a huge thanks to all my fans and friends who follow my work and support me. Thank you very much. And here it is, the second place in the weeds. Um, so this image um, is not just a favorite um, because it doesn't just have one or two, but four of our favorite animal <laughs> in there. Um, it, to me, it stands out because I know what it's like um, to um, photograph river otters and every moment with a river otter is fleeting. They're constantly on the move. They're, they don't sit still for a fraction of a second. So to capture four of them, um, looking in the same direction, almost like they're posing for a family portrait is, is, is really special. And, and it also has a sense of, of action to it because there might be something going on uh, left of the frame that we don't know about um, that, they're, that they're obviously focused on. So um, it's just a great image. And obviously they're, um, they're very cute. <laughs> so um, that's why it stands out to me. And uh, congratulations on getting second place. And then we go to first place in this category, uh, John Harding. And uh, let's watch this video first. My name is John Harding. I've had a love of the natural world from an early age. I take every opportunity now to go out with my camera and record the wonderful wildlife that we have in the United Kingdom. 
unfortunately, I've noted a marked reduction in some of the species that visit or reside in this country. In my opinion, this is probably due to um, modern farming practices, loss of habitat, pollution, and undoubtedly global warming is now starting to have an effect. For the water theme competition, I have submitted a photograph of a gannet with a fish. Fish need water and gannets need fish. All life requires water. And here's the image um, called Water, 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 which is on point. Um, so it, it, this, this great image, um, it's, it's not uh, only very much on theme in this contest, but it also um, summarizes, as he mentioned, how water connects everything. This gannet left its earthly roost to fly through the air, dive underwater, and briefly join these fish in their habitat, take one, break the surface again, and, and get out. Um, it, so, so it sort of pulls everything together the way water ties everything together. And of course, the great splash uh, emphasizes um, uh, the water even more. Um, it's it's a great action and behavior shot. And um, uh, as a photographer, it's 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 easier to pan down a diving bird and follow it down to the water, but you don't know when they're going to come up <laughs> and where they're going to come up. So capturing this moment is is really special and, and a really skillful shot. So uh, congratulations um, to John on a winning first prize. Thank you, Yoko, and thank you, photographers. Our final category is for adult professional art, and for that, we will go back to Jack. Hey there, everybody. Um, this uh, first piece by Floyd Zitten um, is uh, just a, a really wonderful, uh, evocative uh, piece that just brings me to the California coast. Um, it suggest sort of elements of, um, of, of Asian brushwork and also has a kind of a naturalist's eye for the importance of noting the, the rock forms that are around you, the textures of rock surf with those two oyster catchers. Um, it is just a wonderful iconic piece. Let's hear from Floy herself about this work. I want to thank the River Otter Ecology Project for this award and for bringing attention to river otters. We saw one up in the Sonoma Coast last month, which was thrilling. I paint birds. My husband and I go birding as much as possible, and I work from sketches I begin in the field. I'm in my studio, and these are some of my paintings, which will be featured at Viewpoints Gallery in Los Altos this December. So just uh, again, take a look at those, just those, those textures in the rocks. You really have a very powerful sense of place. It's, it's interesting, um, artists who work only from photographs, it really shows in their work. Um, here, you kind of get a sense that, you know, you've been out, you're, you're seeing something that is the work of somebody who's been out on many a cold morning um, to see and experience birds in their habitat. Thank you so much, Floyd. This second one by Claudia Campzano is just a, is, is startling. I found both the, you know, the, from an artistic perspective, the textures on all the different parts of the pipe, the cro cro corrosion um, of those, those, those lines, the water drops clinging to the, the, the handle and the, the end of the spout, just wonderfully done. And then with a little suggestion of that leaf coming up off the bottom of the page, just sort of takes me back that all water is connected in nature. Um, just a, a, a really interesting, thought-provoking piece of work. And I, I, I was really struck and delighted by this. Um, it's, it really sort of shows a, a, a different 
a different form of, of thinking and is also just technically so well carved and, and, and formed, a, a beautiful work of art. And for first place, we couldn't make up our minds. And so we have two first place winners and congratulations to all of our, our winners in all of our categories. Congratulations to all of our participants through um, out um, every category. We are so grateful for um, your entries. And uh, but let's take a look at this one here by Patricia Adams. Um, first look at it as, as an abstract, just forms of color and compositions, um, the lights and the darks. And then you can look at it from the perspective of somebody who sat and watched surf this is such, again, a very challenging, challenging subject, but you really get the, the sense of that, that surf zone where the sand is all churned up, the wet sand, the dry sand, and the, the incoming waves. There's so much life and motion in this. How do you get just sort of a sense of movement and life in, in a still piece of, 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 of canvas? Well, um, Patricia Adams shows us that right here. Um, just so much life and movement. We absolutely love this piece. Thank you, Jack. Our uh, other uh, first place winner is Pooh Wright Pullman. And let's first hear from her about um, herself and her process. Hi, I'm Pooh Wright Pulliam, and I brought you here to the Alcorn Pond to show you where I got my idea for my art piece, The Swirl of It All. And uh, when I came down here, there was a river otter actually here. So this little creek, have, we have our watershed right east of us. It dumps into the Bigwood River right down around the corner here at the foot of the mountain, which dumps into the Vlad, which dumps into the mighty Snake River, goes all across Idaho, and down, then dumps into the Columbia River down to the Pacific Ocean. So I wanted to show you this area. The water is very important to us here in our river otters and our great Bald Mountain where we have skiing. We also have world famous Blue River, Blue Ribbon rivers for fishing. And so I wanted to say hello from our watershed to your watershed. Thank you for letting me enter the competition. Isn't that, that that wonderful? You just you listen to her talk, and she thinks like an ecologist. She knows she knows the ex exactly how to trace the water before her all the way to the oceans and back. So wherever she stands, she's standing in a cycle that connects to the sea that far inland. And if more of us had that kind of understanding and perspective. The way which we treat the earth, the way which we treat each other would be profoundly different. Now let's look at this artwork. Look at the motion, the swirls, the actions of the bubbles. The technique here is called scratch board, where you're cutting into a dark board to reveal the uh, white chalk lines beneath. And um, just so much action and texture in this. Um, an absolute delight. You get the feeling of the joy of being an otter and um, how lucky we are to share this earth with organisms with this much grace and beauty. When you can appreciate it in this way, you can't help but start to get involved as a steward of nature as well. So thank you so much, uh, Pooh Wright Pulliam. We uh, are really moved and inspired by your work. Thank you, Jack, and major thanks to all of you artists, and especially thank you to our judges who worked long and hard to ensure that we had a wonderful show today and did a good job. And we have a couple more things to um, go through with you, but before we carry on, I do want to congratulate all of the artists, all of the poets and the photographers who entered. We appreciate it so deeply. And finally, I would like to mention one of our artists, Sweetbriar Ludwig, who very sadly passed away after a years long illness last week. 
And I did want to mention her. She was a wonderful woman, compassionate woman, and very creative, a wonderful artist. And we thank her for loving nature and offering her talent to our contest. Thank you, Sweetbriar. And now we are going to finish up and I'm gonna finish up with a, um, a uh, animation that was gifted to us. And I wanna thank you for joining us today and also for contributing to this endlessly worthwhile effort that we're all involved in. The arts shine light into a tough world and so do you. So thank you, keep writing, keep making art, keep rising your voices, keep your observations flowing and keep inspiring us all because you truly, truly do. Um, now, please do consider supporting River Otter Ecology Project in your year-end giving. I'm delighted to announce that we have a dollar for dollar matching grant of $25,000 generously gifted to us by the Helen Gann and Richard Aston Fellowship Foundation. These are the gifts that allow us to continue to teach, to research and engage the public in conservation. And that conservation really does make a difference to watershed health and survival. So many thanks to all of you. Don't go away yet, we have another treat for you. Life in the Northern California watershed is a shared proposition. The system is complex and easily unbalanced. Once believed to be extinct, the return of the charismatic river otter, ambassador of our watershed, is a beacon of hope to encourage continuing wetland restoration and conservation. Balancing this fragility is the responsibility of us all. Many, many thanks to Little Fluffy Clouds for this gorgeous animation. It's made us happy forever. It's on our um, homepage of our website if you'd like to see it again. And then many thanks again to our sponsors who I mentioned in the beginning, but you weren't able to see our, um, our slides for our sponsors. And thank you to all of the artists, photographers, poets. Thank you to our judges so much. Yauko, Susie, Arisa, and Jack, you are wonderful. All the work you do for conservation and for nature has comes back and you are the, you are the people who help to inspire us to go forward all the time. So thank you everyone. Thank you for being here.